Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Hope you're having an incredible, incredible day and may peace be upon you. Thank you for joining me today, your host, Dr. Izzy Hajamil. And today I have an inspirational, like one of the most inspiring and badass person that I've known, even though I've known him for a short while, but he is absolutely incredible, always pushing the boundaries over and over and over again, Mr. Dennis Hostema. And he is, oh my God, a truly serial entrepreneur. Like he started multiple business, he has multiple business. Not only that, he's also a certified life and business coach, personal trainer, health coach, um, multiple number one international best-selling author. He's also the founder of motivationandsuccess.com and several other um, foundations and organizations, including a TV network. So Dennis, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you. And today, Dennis and I, we decided to be a little bit uncomfortable and talk about being the best, like the best of the best, the cost and the payoff. Because it's easy to like, oh, I want to do this, do this, but it takes everything to be at the top. So Dennis, tell us what is your definition of being the best um, in what you do? Well, my definition of being the best would be showing up every single day and putting your best foot forward and giving, I, you know, I say, when I, whenever I say giving 110%, a lot of people get upset about that, but really <laughs> giving, giving the most, giving your best is what we really want to do because giving your best means if you gave 100%, you would pass out. So if you gave 100% to your workout, you would pass out. If you gave 100%, at your job, you would go until you literally were in the hospital. So, and, and I've done that, but you know, <laughs> so showing up and giving the best that you can would be probably the explanation of how to, you know, really put your best effort in and put your best foot forward. Exactly. So put your best forward and showing up every single day. Yes, there are circumstances where you can't show up, like, you know, life and death circumstances. But, you know, often I've seen people like, oh, I can't do it. They make an appointment or they make an agreement and then they pull back. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. you don't haven't even tried for it. You haven't even like gone like even like 20% of it. So clearly, Janice, like being the best isn't easy. Otherwise, we'll all be rich by now. Sure. But why should we even bother like being the best? Like what? Yeah, why, why should we even be the best or consider being the best? Because it's hard work. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, I'm a firm believer in, you know, achieving all that, accomplishing all that you're capable of. And that's a big passion for mine because I believe that God put me on this earth to achieve great things. And I feel guilty when, um, from the aspect of not giving my all. So you really have no idea what you can accomplish. And we don't accomplish very much compared to what we're capable of. And so my, my drive is to accomplish as much as I possibly can because I was given this time, I was given these gifts. We have such a short time on earth, but also there's people who don't have as much time as we do on earth. And I, I feel like I would be taking my life for granted by not showing up and giving my best to everybody and, and doing what God has given me as far as my gifts to share with the world. Absolutely. And then, I, and then in, in what you're saying, that being the best, it takes just from being you, right? Yeah. Like it takes you to like other people, um, the impact, the value, and the things that you could change or at least trickle in or trigger in um, to change. Now, Dan, it talks about what, do you have like any kind of um, mantra that or declaration or prayer that you say every day to kind of help you in staying congruent and staying grounded and solid in your path and helping others? Well, I, so I start every day, of course, with prayer and meditation. And, but that's not, the only, that's not the thing that gets me through the day. I have, so I have devotionals and different ones in different areas of my office and my home and my house to where, uh, you know, whenever it, certain times throughout the day, I would say three times throughout the day, I have to pull one of those out 
and I have to just take a minute and just refocus and remember why I'm doing what I'm doing. And really, you know, I, I'm, I, I really get some written word that's spoken to me that really helps me get through the day. Mm -hmm. So that's, and, and that takes me back to being grateful and to being, and understand why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. So it's, it's a, and then of course, before the evening, I always have a, you know, a, a sit down ritual where I plan the next day. Mm -hmm. I'm writing down my goals. I'm fundamentally working on my successes so that my subconscious mind can work on that all night long. So when I wake up the next morning, I'm ready to go. So it's a constant, you know, habits that you're putting in force and you're doing daily that's going to make the difference. Absolutely. So Janice, like I just wanted to take um, our listeners today to the point when you started. So yeah. what made you start what you're doing today? Was there like a point in your childhood or a person that kind of like um, nurture you or inspire you or model you in a certain way? So help us pick through to the five-year-old Dennis or the six-year-old Dennis when it started. So I, 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 brought up, I was brought up in a great family. My mom and dad were very inspirational to me. I always tell everybody, if you look back from my life, zero to 20, there, you're not talking about any problems. I mean, I played sports. I had a great family. I don't have a big, you know, uh, story of, you know, going through hardship or anything. I was brought up properly taught, very good work mm -hmm. ethic. We were never given an allowance. We were always taught that if you wanted to earn money, you could. We bailed hay, we pitched manure, we, had a, we lived on a farm. So I was taught all those things and work ethic at a young age. Of course, at the time, I didn't enjoy it, but I appreciate <laughs> it so much now. You know, that, that's just second nature to me and to be able to, you know, do that. And I started a job at 15 in a machine shop. So uh, I remember it because uh, my, my buddy and I, we, were, we started hanging out and going to movies and, and going different places. And uh, I was like, dad, can I borrow money? Two different weekends in a row. And I said, you know what? I said, if I'm gonna start dating and things like that upcoming, I'm gonna need money. He goes, you start at 6 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> and so at 6 a.m. in the morning, so uh, at 6 a.m. the next morning, I started my first job in a machine shop. And um, that's, that's where, where it took off from there. So I did that from 15 to 20. And then I was laid off. And I was going to college at the time. And I answered an ad to be a, a financial representative for an insurance company. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, so, you know, obviously a little downfall with being laid off, but then starting into a, a career. Within a few months, I, I had a mentor there, Roger, who mm -hmm. said, Dennis, you know, do you want to make this amount of money? Do you want to do this? And I said, of course I do. He goes, well, then the best thing is to shut up and listen. <laughs> so I was 20 years old. This guy, I know, I know how he's doing successfully financially. So that's what I did. I was naive. So mm -hmm. something you, you mentioned too in your introduction about the comfort zone, that's one thing. It was never comfortable. And if you're not getting out of your comfort zone every single day, every single week, you're not growing and there is no chance for you to be the best. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things he taught me. And, and of course, my brother supported me very much so before he passed away. So six months into my career, my brother passed away. Sorry and that's when to I, hear that. Yeah, that's when I, that's, thank you. That's when I really started to reflect on our time on earth, the time we're given here and really capitalizing on the talents that we've been given and, and really accomplishing what we're capable of. So. Absolutely. And it's kind of like a couple of points that you touched there is having a mentor, isn't it, Roger? It sounds like the like the, the, the typical mentor, isn't it? Roger, the name Roger, and yeah. he said, "Shut up and listen." Kind yes. Of thing. <laughs> no, Very. because because I feel that if we, you know if Roger were to be like Dennis, I think, and then you get that whatever Roger. Like I feel that like as, as, a, as a leader, you got to be able to not push your foot around things. Yes. like give it to you straight because otherwise you'll be like hey i'm just gonna go off dating you know i yeah. don't there wasn't like that so and then the second thing that you talked about is um being um uncomfortable oh my god like who wants to wake up early in the morning who wants to do this who wants to do this so i want to touch the first point in being the best it's also being about being a leader like, how do you see yourself as a leader? I mean, what kind of leader are you? And what kind of leader do you feel that people are moved um, towards? 
Well, and, and trust me when I tell you, leadership is something I'm always working on because I definitely can, it's always something you can improve because people respond to different types of leaders. One of my, my best way of leadership is leading by example. So I think that, so I, it's really good when I have followers or, or people that I train who can watch and learn from example. So I get up early, I do the workouts, I put in the work. And I lead that way. The only problem I would say to people out there is that's a great example and that's a great form of leadership. But remember, the bigger you get and the bigger your team is, people are motivated by different things. So mm -hmm. just because somebody responds well to a leader who leads by example, somebody else needs an authoritative figure and somebody else needs a nurtured somebody with empathy. So there is also, we can all constantly improve. The bigger you get with an organization, the more you have to work on your leadership skills it's a constant battle for me i know mm -hmm. i cannot improve on leadership enough to to lead a team because everybody's different right so mm -hmm. you know you're dealing with constant constant change in in your leadership skills to help grow your your people and, and make them maximize your team absolutely so like being a leader i know that people um well, you have your own things to do on one side, but at the same time, you have people wanting things from you, yeah. from either your team member or outside organization or what have you not. So how do you keep your sanity? Like, how do you put the boundaries around that so that, hey, this is what's important to me. And this is how I'm going to take care of this. Um, also about saying no. Oh, my God. No, I can't say no. No, that is these people. So talk about um, that aspect of breaking boundary and staying in your lane. Yeah, well, I would, first of all, I would phrase it properly. And Jim Rohn is very good at, at mm -hmm. explaining how to say no. You know, if somebody says something to you, you say, hey, you know, I don't think that's feasible or possible for me at this time, but I'll get back to you if I can do it. And mm -hmm. then you're, you're let, you know, you're letting them know that really it's, a, it's, there's just not enough bandwidth in the day for me to take on everything that I'm doing. But I am passionate about it. I understand what you're saying. And if I can help, I would definitely, I will definitely do that. So I think that, and as far as the sanity thing, the verdict's still out on that, whether I'm, you know, <laughs> so uh, um, with what I do on a daily basis, but I will say something that helps me is I keep my standards so high for myself. So my expectations for myself are so high that I don't allow myself and that's be so when I hold other people to a high standard, it's because I don't hold anybody to less standards that I would hold myself. So I mm -hmm. constantly hold very high standards for myself. And that's what sets me apart on a daily basis um, and helps me um, reach the goals that I that I want to hit. Absolutely. I think about starting standards and the guy that pops to my mind is Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, he is, um, you know, 44 years old. He's still playing Super Bowl. I mean, football, like more times than anyone I've ever known. Look, I don't even know about American football. It's not what I grew up. I only know they kick the ball to the goal, right? That's all that I know. So I don't know about the, anything else. But I do know what you're saying about, and similar to Tom Brady, it's about having your standards that is way bigger than anyone else to go for it, even if um, circumstances. Tom Brady is at 44, like people retire at what, 30? Like almost 30 on um, any kind of um, professional sports because it takes a toll in their body. So kind of like, I just wanna hone in on you having that standards. One, it's not gonna be exhausting on you having those high standards to yourself and two if you kind of like break down on your standards what are the ways that you can do to nurture yourself or pull yourself back up again because it's going to happen over and over again sure i the first thing there's a lot of good points there the first thing with breaking down on your standards is create habits you have mm -hmm. to create success habits and success fundamentals you have to be fundamentally sound and have those habits going every single day or it'll just fall apart because the noise and the squeaky wheel just comes in and it's just it's very easy to fall apart so you have to have those time chunks and those habits in force the other thing that i want to touch on and, and i heard john maxwell say it best you want to get to where i am but are you willing to do what i did to get here tom brady a good very good point that you brought up there is people aren't willing to do the sacrifices tom brady doesn't drink tom brady 
is um, I think he's vegan. I mean, he's, you know, he's eating all the right things. His body is probably the age of a 25 year old man, you know? So that's why he's playing at his highest level and being his best self is because he has sacrifices that he's put in his life and habits that he's put in his life that has allowed him to excel at such a level. Now people, you know, may hate on him or not appreciate how great he is, but that's just a lot of jealousy for the fact that he's willing to make those sacrifices to play at the level that he plays at. And so I commend him for, for doing that because a lot of people want the end result, but they don't want to make those sacrifices to get there. Absolutely. And one of the things like Tom Brady, um, like he was interviewed um, uh, when he had the Super Bowl or something. Sorry, I don't know the technology like correctly, but I know it's like the big game. And then um, one of uh, the reporters asked him, so are you going to watch back the Super Bowl? He's like, no. And the people are like, what? How could you? But the thing is, Tom Brady is a player. He's not a fan. Yeah. And the same with you. You're a player. You're in the game playing it versus on the sidelines of, you know, watching. Do you know how many? I remember when I first started um, my online um, transitioning for, to online world started. And, the, you know, the first thing they tell you, choose a niche. I'm like, okay, how many niche? I would choose. Okay, I just did that one. And then a few years on there's still people i'm just researching on my niche whereas i've moved on and you know multiple niche so talk about i know this is something that is resonating with you how do you transition between a fan to player like in the court in the field playing because it's a scary transition it's scary what if i fail what if they make it what if people judge me so with your experiences and going on multiple businesses, tell me what's your wisdom, Dennis? Well, my wisdom there is very simple. So do not overthink and have paralysis <laughs> analysis. Do not like my, my brother is 10 times smarter than me and he really analyzes everything. Right. And it, I am not that way. I know I drive him crazy because I am just, I am just go, you know, I get from the, the point of being a fan to being a player, Mm -hmm. make that as short as possible just mm -hmm. go do not mm -hmm. you know i think in nike when i say just do it don't don't think about it don't listen to anybody obviously do your research that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying to be yeah. crazy and put a gamble on it but listen you need to just go because if you look at amazon when it started if you look at facebook when it started it is not perfect our television network is not perfect right now but mm -hmm. darn it we're going to try every single day to improve 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 and eventually, hopefully we get to one of those big platforms like those things, but you have to just go and do it. If you think about it or you talk to 10 people who have never done it, we get advice from so many people, just bad advice. Stop mm -hmm. talking. If you want to talk to somebody, talk to somebody who's either completed it or don't or watch their YouTube video, listen to their podcast like we're doing right now. There's so much free information to improve on your life. Don't listen to the bad don't listen, don't get advice from people you shouldn't be listening to because there's all sorts of free advice out there that is horrible. So just mm. go out and do it. And that's, that's my biggest key is do not overthink it. If you think about it, there's all sorts of reasons that mistakes will come in and doubt. If you don't, if you just go and do it, you don't have to worry about that. Happen. I like, really like your idea. Okay. And just do your research, but take it the shortest time possible. Mm -hmm. In other words, not, um, you know, um, waiting months or weeks, take it longer because the longer the fear creeps in and then you're being paralyzed yeah. and stop. Um, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You could probably lose some money or whatever it is. Right. But it's the lesson that you learn when you kind of like, jumping in um to the start and i uh, like you know i'm like okay i want to do this all right i'm just gonna do it <laughs> versus like yep. i'm gonna do this oh i'm gonna talk to this person and that person i'm gonna read on this book i'm gonna watch this this and then two years on still at the same pace so dennis what have you learned in terms of the lessons um that you know people are so scared to to fail Whereas Brian Tracy said in his book that 70% of the time we make mistakes. I'm like, for God's sake, okay, 70% and leave you like, you know, 30% to make it right. But what have you learned in the last um, 20 years or so, or, you know, throughout your life, that when you failed, 
uh, is actually one of the biggest lessons, the biggest miracle, the biggest turning point in your life? Well, I think not to generalize, but I think one of the best things I heard, so I never see anything as a failure. I see something as a learning experience. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, the best thing I, I remember, it was way back, probably 19 years ago, I, I was listening to a marketer say, well, you should just go out and try it because the best thing you can do is try something and it not work because then from a marketing perspective and getting sales leads and whatnot, you know that mm -hmm. that, that specific, uh, specific route doesn't work. So now you know mm -hmm. not to do that one next time. If you, you know, cause everything, these, these ideas are meant to be good sales pitches, right? So it sounds like <laughs> a good idea. So if you try it and learn that it doesn't work, that's just one that that's one notch that you can throw out and learn from. Um, the biggest mistakes I think that I've ever, the hardest mistakes I should say is, um, really again, focusing on leadership and teamwork and really, mm -hmm. um, improving. It took me a long time to learn to lead better. And, um, they, that's one of the, and understanding that not everybody learns the same way. That's, those are my toughest lessons because, um, just thinking, well, this is how I teach. You just need to learn that way period. You know, that's not the yeah. way it works, no matter how much I want it. And the other thing I will say, and it took me a lot of expensive coaching to mm -hmm. get through this is some people don't want to be motivated. Some people mm -hmm. don't want to play at the level you want to play at. And if you're trying to fix those people that don't want to fix themselves, mm -hmm. you're just spinning your wheels. And that, that took me a lot of expensive teaching and, and going back to coaching and mentoring. It's something I knew, mm -hmm. but I would just spin my wheels on it daily. Like, Oh, they're so talented. Why don't they do it this way? but you can't help somebody who's not willing to put in the work. And that's what I, what I learned the hard way. Absolutely. No, because you care, Dennis, yeah. it's about because you care, you want something good for them. You see what could be possible, but you know, at the end, there'll be a point where like, you just got to let go and let God, isn't yeah. it? Because you can't um, inspire, you know, that they just got to be willing to do it. Like they got to be open and ready and willing. And, um, you know, talking about when um, you were younger, what was the thing that people said about you that you felt like kind of like, um, not really a bad thing, but kind of like, oh, but it's actually, it's what makes you a best leader. Like, I'll give you an example. Like for me, people always call me bossy and demanding and everything. But when it comes to school project, guess whose group they want to be in? Yeah. mine because i get the job done and i and i get it. it wasn't about bossy or anything because of like you the standard i have a vision this is what it takes to be the best so what was it that people say about you that um actually it is one of your best qualities to be a leader well i that's very easy for me so i always wanted to play in the nba and obviously i just didn't get the height for it but that's just an <laughs> excuse but um so one of the things that for me people always said i was too serious and i expected too much when it came to like even now if you me and my younger brother go and pick up uh, uh, and go play one-on-one -on -one at a, a basketball game him, him and i are both wired the same way when it comes to that you would think that we were paying for like a million dollars i mean we just kill each other out there so there is no i am and that's our fun by the way so our expectations of playing any sport or anything we do with work, it's again, goes back to expectations. I remember people in the locker room being like, why are you so serious and so mad? Because this is, if you're gonna play the game, play it right, right? So I'm so serious when it comes to that. It's the same thing in business. If you're gonna play it, my expectations are here. So many people have, uh, um, what is it? Beer budget standards on, on champagne dreams, right? So I, mm. I, I just have these standards that if you're going to play, you might, if, if you go to the gym, okay, go to the gym, give 110%. If you're going to go to the gym, why I hate it when I go to the gym and people are texting and just hanging around the weights talking. <laughs> it's like, why are you there? If you're going to go to work, go to work and work. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to have family time, if you're going to spend time with your children, mm -hmm. spend quality time with your children, but give hundred percent, be present. And that's where, um, I think that I was probably a little bit ridiculed, didn't care. I was a lot mm -hmm. cockier then. Um, my health has knocked me back a little bit, but you know, it's really helped me in the standards in business as well. Absolutely. And you know, those people at the gym that are taxing, they're probably like, it's like a 
a, a, a pickup meat store, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. But you know, there's also this guy in football. Um, is it Jerry Hall? I think it's Jerry Hall. He's a footballer. He's one of um, I forgot his linebacker or quarterback or whatever position he plays. But he, one of the things that makes him one of the top is number one, he's the first in and the last out. Yeah. But he done, doesn't come in at two minutes before or one minute. He just comes in like one and a half hour. You know, like when yeah. I was like crazy, like who does that? And then the second thing with him is that he, every time the ball touches his um, hand, he goes all out. Every single, just like you on the court, you would just go all out for it. And the rest of the team members, they would go maybe, I don't know, 20%, 30%. But Jerry Hall is the type that goes all out. I, um, I know for someone who doesn't know football, knows quite a few things um, because I love sport. I used to say sport. But isn't that the case, Dennis? When you have the ball on your hand, you yes. do not let it touch the ground to the finish line. Uh, that's beautifully put. I agree completely. Yeah, you need to be giving your all that entire time. I often think of Kobe Bryant whenever he was interviewed about his how he practiced. If he mm -hmm. went in and he practiced two hours from four to six mm -hmm. and then from and then took a break and practiced from eight to ten and then took another break and he practiced four different two hour sessions throughout his day mm -hmm. and his competitors just played for two hours, you get mm -hmm. that much further ahead than your competition. Mm -hmm. And there's no such mm -hmm. thing as competition after a few years because there's just no way for them to catch up. So that's one of the Absolutely. things that helps me go. Brilliant. It's just, you know, that everything, like you said, showing up, that everything thing and you know not let the ball touch the ground basically like 110 percent all um, the time because often i see quite a lot of entrepreneurs and coaches they just started their business um you know got a few clients i don't want to do this oh i don't want to do the marketing i don't want to do the sales i don't want to do this i don't want to do that i mean the number one rule of business is sales like the, otherwise any business is going to go under the ground like blockbuster and Sears, it's sales, isn't it? Like if you look at the, yes, there are other factors, but the number wise is sales. They're not making enough money to do that. It's just, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I just want to do what I love, my passion, and the money will follow. I'm going to call BS on that because it's not the truth, isn't it? No. Follow your passion plus yep. being the best, plus not letting the ball drop, plus being uncomfortable, plus this. So tell me what's your formula? Um, Dennis, because you're, you're doing um, amazing things, following your passion, but people just see the passion part, but they're not willing to do the hard work. So tell me what's the formula that's going to complete. Follow your passion and fill in the blank. Well, you definitely, I mean, you nailed it right on the head with you have to constantly improve your sales skills to where you're selling is not really selling. You're helping your customer. You have mm -hmm. to figure out exactly that formula, how to properly encourage someone to better themselves that's what really mm -hmm. selling is and you know what nothing happens and i mean in any business nothing happens until some form of a sale is made and if you want to the quickest way to success is figuring out how to make sure your customers are taken care of from that mm -hmm. sales perspective everything else can be fixed if you don't mm -hmm. have your sales fixed if you don't have that portion of your business or mm -hmm. even your life whether it's relationships or whatever if you don't have that portion of your business fixed nothing else will work nothing else i always say production fixes everything so you know mm -hmm. if you think you don't have enough time in the day go produce and do really really well here you'll find time for paperwork you'll find time mm -hmm. for marketing you'll find time for all those things if you're out producing and you're out selling so those things, that is such an intricate part. If you are in business, mm -hmm. and you have not learned sales skills, you're doing yourself a, a disservice. That's just the way it is. It's just, you have to learn it. Just to be able to be good at customer service, you have to learn sales mm -hmm. skills. Because again, if you have an upset client, that you've got to be able to handle that properly and make sure that they're taken care of. Absolutely, that's so important. And I feel that, you know, watching my kids, right? 
feels that they're a natural sales superstar. They're born a natural sales superstar. Like, how many times have like, they asked me to do things or buy things for them? <laughs> or yeah. like, you know, do you know, so many different things that are natural. And you know, when I say no, they ask again, they ask yeah. again, they ask again, to the point like, I'm like, okay. Like, you know, just over the weekend, my kids was like, mommy, you know, we want to go to Target. And then they wanted to buy stuff. I'm like, oh, mommy's so tired. Mommy, we want to go to Target. Mommy, we want to. We need to buy this. Mommy and this. Mommy, don't worry, mommy. Oh, I've got, I've got my own money, mommy. Don't. <laughs> to the point that I took both of them to Target. It's just, um, it's, I think I feel that it's natural, right? Yep. Daniel's sales is natural, but yep. because of life experiences, um, they, they, we put a block on it to like I, you know I, it's a natural talent yeah my dad was really good at showing me he had we'd go to flea markets for like saddles and different things when i was young and he'd have me go and negotiate the price for a saddle or things like that and also i went out and sold for 4-h i sold raffle tickets so i had so many experiences like that that taught me so much that that's it like you said if you keep that kid inside you which you mentioned last week when we were talking you you're really and you're not afraid of rejection it's just that natural Absolutely. So one of the things about being the back, and you've mentioned it, a um, couple of things, and I'm just going to put it out there, it's about having teams. Yeah. Because, Janice, you wouldn't be here um, if you haven't got teams. That's why uh, learning, being a, a good leader, an exemplary, extraordinary, um, inspirational leader is important to you. So talk about the teams, because... Uh, quite a few of the times, even me myself having teams, I would just rather do it on my own. It's just easier, you know, it's just faster, it's just quicker with the team, then I have to train them and explain them and then check it, blah, 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 blah. So, but to be the best and to be the level that you want, you can't be on your own. So, talk about your tips of creating um, a good team that is in alignment with your principles and values. And um, yeah, and how do you kind of like inspire them, grow them, handle them, even when there's conflict, even when there's up, or even when there's down? Well, first of all, I mean, my best advice that I can give here is staff your weaknesses. So you need to know your strengths and you need to play your strengths and you need to stay in that zone. Whatever keeps you in flow as an individual, that's where your 80% of your focus needs to be. And then you need like IT work or marketing or all those different areas you need to staff your weaknesses and make sure that you create the best team in each one of those areas that you're not good at because like me doing like computer skill work is just a detriment to everyone involved so <laughs> it's just you know it's just not gonna happen i was i was excited when i when i uploaded the headshot of my picture for your for your podcast so you know i mean that's just something that no matter what i don't have a passion for it. it's not a strength it's a waste of my time to, mm -hmm. to even learn it because I am so focused on what I'm doing. So you need to staff mm -hmm. your weaknesses and that's, that's one of the things. And then you need to learn to delegate. Delegating mm -hmm. is not easy because like mm -hmm. you, if you do it right yourself and you know it's gonna get done in a timely manner and you don't, it's, it's hard to pass it off. Even knowing that they may only get 85% of it finished, it's still hard to pass that off because nobody's gonna care about your business as much as you. So what you need to do is try to find people that care. At least I always say, I want it to be in the top five, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying to put my business before your kids, before your wife, mm. before your husband, before your family. I'm not saying that, but I'd like to be in the top five of things that you care about so that at least I know that I'm on the radar of something you want to make sure happens properly. And so, and again, you constantly have to work on leadership. You know, conflict mm -hmm. resolution is probably 80% of any leader's day. <laughs> It's just, it's just the way it is getting people to get along, getting them to, you know, not gripe about each other, keeping a positive atmosphere and just keep trying your best because no matter what one bad duck, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And that is so true in every team. And don't forget that. Absolutely. So coming on kind of like towards the end now, mm -hmm. one of the important aspects about team is your partner. Right, because when you have like th this is mindset, you can either have a really successful career or business, or you have a successful relationship, but you can't have both. 
because that's a conflict. So um, I know you have a wife, you've shared with me before and you've yep. been together for some time. So how, what kind of tips or what kind of role that you have to ensure that you have both? Because one thing about partnership or marriage is that it takes the same amount of commitment, if not more, in your mm -hmm. personal life and in business life. You got to choose to be on it, in it. You got to choose to work on it. So what's the secret, Dennis, in having that um, a, a career? And then when you go home, you have the warmth, the cuddles, the kisses, the hugs, the chilling out time. So what's the secret to that? I think you definitely need to know what your boundaries and what what your goal is with your relationship and what, what your important triggers are as well as your, as your significant others. So like mm -hmm. one thing for me is making sure like my wife knows that I can't take her being a dream crusher. And so she does not crush any of my dreams. I've dated dream crushers. I've been with dream crushers before and it just does not work with my personality as you can imagine. It just mm -hmm. like my level of confidence and self-esteem just hits the floor. So no matter mm -hmm. what, anything else, that's, that's, a, that's a boundary for me that I've learned the hard way through life. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is I tell my wife that if I'm going to go and I'm going to put in these hours and I'm going to kill myself for however many hours a day, you get to plan the vacations, you get to plan the travel, and that's my 100% time with you. So when you, when you want to plan, so I, I'm completely okay with you doing that and, and us really taking time. That's where I think has been very effective in my relationships mm -hmm. is taking time and just, we just got back from, we we're having a baby and we just got back from a vacation before um, about two weeks ago. And it was amazing. It was just our time to just really reflect before our child comes on the, into this earth and really just spend time together just us no distractions no anything else just enjoying mm -hmm. each other's company so you got to make sure you make time for those things otherwise you you may have the most successful career in the world but mm -hmm. like you said your relationship's falling apart or and, and you don't want vice mm -hmm. versa either because a great relationship with no career is not good either absolutely so like coming to the end Dennis, um what's your biggest advice or wisdom to anybody that's listening about being the best um like is it worth it should i go for it so or is it just cool to stay where they are if that's what they so choose for so what's the biggest advice and wisdom that you can share don't it, it's a very simple process but it's hard work so even if you say all oh, work smarter not harder you still have to put in the work. All those people on the internet and the CEOs with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis and whatnot, if they made it there, yes, of course, everybody, there's the, the lottery winnings and whatnot. But if you want to really get there, you have to put in the work. You have to raise the level of game that you're playing. You have to set those expectations high. Absolutely, it's worth it. But don't think it's going to be overnight. I'm a 19-year overnight success. I tell people that all the time. So you have to put in the work and then you never know if you're constantly putting in the work, one break could change your entire life. But if you're not showing up and you're not working every day and getting to that next level and playing it at a higher level, then you'll never get there. Absolutely. So what's one key action? What's one key action? Something simple, something doable that people can do today in the step in becoming the best. I would say, write down your goals every single morning and every single night every single even if it's your three top goals write them down every night and write them down every morning because you have to hold yourself accountable because nobody else is going to do it if you don't do it you will never reach the goals that you want you have to write them down every morning and every night and there's something about writing things down isn't it Dennis? versus like in your head yeah. Uh, yes, there's visualization and everything, but it's just something about writing it down that just make it a little bit more real mm -hmm. in the creation and manifestation of that. So let's end with this, Dennis. What's one fun thing that people don't know about you and you can't say basketball because you already mentioned basketball. So right. what's one fun thing that people don't know about you? In 2000, I was the Defiance County 4-H king. Okay, what was that? Are you winning a bull or what? Yeah, at 4-H, so I was, I was, I rode horses, and so I was oh. the county fair king in, two, in the year 2000, <laughs> when I was 18 years old. So I'm actually royalty, but it's only in the 4-H world, so that's probably a lot of people don't, and I rode horses, so 
I um I love riding horses. So a lot of people don't know that about me. That's awesome. My daughter loves horses. Her dream is to have a pony um one day. So she had a dream, and as a result, she needed to make money. So she wrote a book. But she loves she would she would love talking to you all about horses and um ponies and she even enrolled me like you know mommy when i have a horse you're gonna come and feed the horse every day i'm like for god's sake like i'm gonna have to feed the pony now so assuming the so cool. sale i love it <laughs> thank you and that's so cool so you were the king uh for the horse i mean like uh, in the championship for for the whole county fair so that's a, it's each county has a fair i was the, i was the king that year yeah <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. Thank you so much, Dennis, for hanging out today. And Dennis and I, we can talk the whole day yes. long. It would just like be so fun um, to have a conversation um, with him. So thank you so much, Dennis, for, for today. And send my regards to your wife. Yeah. And thank you so much for listening to all of you. This is your host, Dr. Izzihar Jamir. And tell yourself, yes, I can. And so it is done. Thank you so much. Say bye, Dennis. Thank, thank bye, you so bye, much. Bye. I appreciate it. Yep. My